Yeah, Minwu, uh, let's start with uh, your week in Brisbane. Uh, thoughts now that you've had a couple of days to think about it? Uh, amazing. Um, yeah, uh, just to win, win at home and uh, do it in front of my family and friends. It was incredible. Um, still don't think it's sunk in because I obviously got work to do this week, but um, yeah, I was really excited about it and um, got to put my name on trophy with a lot of good names. What did you get up to on Sunday night? <laughs> uh, that's the question everyone's asking, but no, nothing too serious. Um, again, work to do this week. So, um, you know, my win in Wickow, I kind of learned from, I went pretty hard at, uh, after that win. So, um, and had Zozo the week after. So I thought I didn't get the best preparation for that week. So I'm uh, learning from them experiences. And, uh, you know, I just had a qu medium, I would say medium, not quiet not massive just right in the middle um good enough to celebrate but not enough for a hangover so uh right in between and um again ready for this week excellent uh questions thanks who's got the microphone uh just get the mic down here blakey please sorry about that minwoo you had a, like a looked like a pretty relaxed build up to when you won in brisbane you know doing a lot of media and and clinics and things like that is that work for you is that something you're finding um I wouldn't say it was chill, um, media stuff, uh, not, you know, not every time I'm the, you know, the, one of the main guys and the main headline for the week. So, um, yeah, when I come to Oz, I do a bit more media. Uh, I did the cooking, cooking challenge, I guess. And then, uh, went to post Malone on the Thursday, uh, afternoon. So I wouldn't say it was chill, but it was, uh, it was good. You know, post Malone's one of my favorite artists and my girlfriends and my friends. So, you know, I've seen him three times now and he's here on Wednesday this week in Sydney. So um, I was thinking of maybe going again, but uh, I, might, I might keep it a bit more low-key this week. Um, but it was, it was a really good, good build-up for the week. Um, obviously not, you don't want to go to a concert between tournaments, but, um, you know, I haven't seen him. No, I haven't seen him. I've seen, I saw him probably like four or five months ago in Perth when they when he did Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, but um, not chill, just just fun, very fun. Um, I was with my family and friends, so that was really good. And did you bring the chef's hat this week? <laughs> I still have to ask my caddy where he got the chef hats on 17 because I was... Uh, I, I told him before the hole... I, I, you know, chuck me some, chuck me some balls. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw them out after the, after the hole's done. Uh, and then he gives me these, they give me the chef hat, and I'm like, I'm not wearing this. And he's like, Go on, wear it. So I, I ended up wearing it, but it was, um, it was a shock to me. I didn't know that it was happening. So uh, I still got to ask him when he got it. Just down here with Brendan. I mean, what's your experience here at the Oz and at the Lakes? Um, and what would be your ideal conditions to play at over the ne over the four days of the tournament? Yeah, uh, Australian. Um, a really good memory of mine was playing with Jordan Spieth here in 2016 when he was the headline act. Um, I was 17 years old, so it was it was unreal. I played with him on the Saturday, obviously when you know school was done and all the kids got out and the fairways you know were filled with so many people. So I didn't play. Ended up playing that good, but. Um, it was definitely an experience I can, I can look back on and, you know, kind of got caught up in all of it. And, you know, as a 17-year-old, you don't have that big of a crowd. So uh, I really love that moment. And um, now that I get to play with Jordan, it's pretty cool um, week in, week out. So uh, Australians, I know Australians golf club is, is tough, uh, which is probably better for, for me. I like, I like pretty tough courses. Um, or if it's easy, it's nice and nice and easy, and I'm playing good golf, so uh, both of the, both of them can help. Um, I'm hitting the ball really well now. So uh, the lakes, I'm not sure if I have that much memory of it. I don't know if I played here, um, but I'm going to go out today in the afternoon and have a have a look at it. Steve, I'm in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, how do you go about preparing for multiple venues in one tournament like you have this week? Yeah, um, again, you know, my, my motto really is, like, not to overwork it, overdo it. You know, sometimes I would rather... F I've played plenty of courses, you know, by just looking at it and not, not having... As an amateur, you know, you just go up and don't have a practice round. So, um, 
yeah, just a, like a lot of expectations. You just have to go out and play and if you, hopefully you hit a good swing or, you know, your caddy, my caddy's walking out there now and you have a good enough caddy to look at the misses and where not to go and um, stuff like that. I think that's, that's the difference between when I was 18, 19, you know, just going out there and just playing and now it's just, you know, you've, you've got someone to lean on and you've got someone that does their job really well and uh, maps the course out. So, you know, I could probably go out today and play full 18 holes and just bank on his uh, ideas and bank on his, the way he looks at the course. And uh, what's been the biggest uh, thing you've learned from your 2023 season? Um, I mean, not to really overdo it. You know, I've, I've, I just wanted to stay happy and stay, stay fresh. Um, it's been a long, like, couple years, so I kind of wanted to feel good and, and play good. So, um, again, you know, yeah, I'd, it might have helped beating, like, hundred thousands of balls, but for me, like, I'm, I'm a type of player that is a very feel player and I don't need to do too much of that. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I... I don't think there was, like, specific learning. Uh, I think just growing, that was the main thing. Uh, just going tournament week in and week out and kind of just doing the same thing, keeping the same routine and, uh, and working, working hard when I needed to. Have you worked out what your schedule's going to look like in 2024 yet? Yeah, I think a uh, we'll majority of it will be on the PJ Tour until whatever, Tour, tour Championship, and then uh, I'll go out to Europe, I think, and play there and probably finish out in, um, in Europe as well. So... Uh, Half, probably just over half would be in America on the PJ Tour and then, and then Europe after. Any other questions, guys? Um, Minwoo, Nicole Jeffrey. Um, would, uh, does, would that schedule include the Olympics if you got the chance? Yes, uh, that, that is definitely a big... I guess it's getting gotten closer since last week. Um, the world rankings going going better, getting better. So um, that's definitely, you know, President's Cup was one of the big things and now Olympics is uh, an even bigger thing, you know, representing Australia would be an honour and, uh, you know, my sister got to play it in a couple of times and it, it looks so special. So um, I'll, be, I'll be very keen to get on that team and uh, play for Australia. I mean, Kate Oldman from Women's Golf Magazine, uh, huge year for you and your sister. How special would it be if you could both get great results here? And how's, how have you seen her form coming in? Yeah, um, early on, she didn't play overly as good as what she normally did. Um, she was overcoming a few things. And lately, she's been playing really good. Um, as I said in the other interview, you know, normally when I win, she wins the week after. So if you're a betting person, you probably... She'll probably win this week. So um, if you're going off trends, yeah, she normally wins the week after. So uh, um, it, would, it would be nice if uh, I have the winning, the winning throne for the, for the end of the year, um, obviously because we've got a few weeks off and, uh, until the new, new season starts. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be nice for both of us to, I guess, win the same week. It would be, it would be pretty crazy. You know, we, we won back-to-back weeks, but on the same week would be something else. Is there any sibling rivalry over who gets a win? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit. You know, um, I get a little pissed off when she when she wins the week after because I got the I got the um, light on me for a little bit, and then four days later, or like a week later, she's you know she's holding a trophy. So I mean, there's not we're happy for each other. You know, we we want to only do well um, and inspire kids and play keep playing good golf. So uh, it's it's not that bad of a sibling rivalry, but petty, a little petty. From me, from me usually. <laughs> Is that it, everyone? Big thanks, Min Woo. Cheers. Best of luck this Thank week. You. Hopefully thanks, we'll guys. see you again. Uh, oh, Nicole's got one more. Um, yeah, so, um, Minji obviously um, came straight out of the box with international success. Yep. Um, has it been difficult for you to be patient and wait for your chance or has it given you sort of um, motivation or inspiration or belief that you could do it as well? 
Yeah, uh, for sure, inspiration. Anything she does, um, she only does really well. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, people say, like, oh, does it suck? But I don't think it sucks. I mean, I would rather her do really well than bad. So it's it's definitely motivating for me to play as good as her. And, I mean, she does it so easy. And, you know, I have to bust my butt to, to win a tournament. So, um, you know, she's got a lot under her belt and hopefully I can I can get to that stage um, which slowly I think I am uh, but no it's not there's not much pressure you know I mean she was so good from such a young age and um, I've obviously taken a little bit a different route um, starting out in Europe and not an Aussie and not just go straight onto the uh, big scene so um, I think for my growth it was really good to play international uh, globally and then hopefully I can Go out and do some damage in America. We'll make Brendan's the last one. Sorry, Mick. Um, after your win on Sunday, uh, social, you would have seen it. Social media, everyone was from being complimentary through to saying you're the most exciting thing in world golf at the moment. <laughs> How does that sit with you? To be, set, to be basically called the, the biggest thing in the game. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Um, I've always, I guess half of it, a quarter of it I would say is because of my social media and obviously the other part is good, the good golf. Um, but, you know, I loved, since I was a little kid, I loved doing social media and loved being a spotlight and being the front of attention. So it's nice to be, be both a great player and, a, and try, to, try to be funny about things and try to, you know, make people happy. So, um, you know, I'm... I didn't. I feel like I expected it um, to to be, you know, a good, great player, um, and then I guess being being out there in the social media world, I expected that too because I've I've done it from such a young age, and um, no, it's it's really cool. Um, every week, I feel like I've got it getting getting more fans wherever I go and wherever I do go there. There are fans from you know even in s small countries. So I I really really appreciate that and that's the support's been unreal cool thanks minwoo best of luck this Thank week you. thanks guys